crystals are found on the left hand side of the periodic table. Let's take lithium for example. Lithium has the atomic number 3 and the mass number 7. That means it's got 4 neutrons inside its nucleus and 3 protons which are positive. The electron arrangement is 2, 1. That means in the first energy level it has 2 electrons and in the second energy level it has 1 electron. That's a total of 3 electrons which are negatively charged. So the overall charge of that particle is 0 because we have 3 positives, 3 negatives. They cancel each other out which tells us that that's an atom. We know that all elements want to achieve stability by having a full, stable outer electron shell. Metals will always lose outer electrons to form positive ions. It wants to have the electron arrangement too. As a result, the number of electrons change. We now have two electrons. Three positive plus two negative gives our overall charge of positive. This means that metal atoms prefer to sit as metal ions. Non-metals are found on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Let's take fluorine for example. The chemical symbol is F. The atomic number is 9, which means the number of protons is equal to 9 positive. The mass number can be found on page 7 of the data booklet, which is 19. 19 minus 9 tells us we have 10 neutrons. The electron arrangement for fluorine is 2, 7. We can see that in the first energy level, we've got 2 electrons. Second energy level, we've got 7 electrons. That's a total of 9 electrons. 9 positive plus 9 negative equals 0. So we know that it has got a 0 charge and is therefore an atom. All elements want to achieve stability by having a full, stable outer electron shell. Non-metals always gain electrons to form negative ions. So the fluorine will want to gain one electron to have the electron arrangement to eight. This means that we've changed the number of electrons. The number of electrons we now have are 10. Nine positive plus 10 negative equals minus one charge. Remember, we don't write negatives. So we now have a negatively charged particle which is known as an ion. The positive metal ion is attracted to the negative non-metal ion. Opposites attract. This is an electrostatic force of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. Ionic substances are more commonly known as salts. So we have to know the key definition of ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is the electrostatic force of attraction between positive ions which are formed from metals losing outer electrons, and negative ions, which are formed from non-metals gaining electrons. We can see from this diagram here, which represents an ionic substance, that we have positive ions and negative ions. They are held together in a huge ionic lattice. Ionic substances always exist as solids. They have high melting points and boiling points, and this is because the strong ionic bonds need to be broken. Conductivity is the flow of charged particles. The names of the charged particles in ionic substances are ions. We have both positive and negative ions, which can be found in the lattice structure. However, we know that ionic substances are solid at room temperature. Particles in the solid are unable to move. So in the solid state, ionic substances do not conduct electricity. However, they can conduct electricity when in solution or when molten, and this is because the ions are free to move. The last property we look at is solubility. Solubility is the ability of a substance, which is normally known as a solute, to dissolve in a solvent, which is usually a liquid. If it is able to dissolve, we say that the substance is soluble. And if it is unable to dissolve, we say that the substance is insoluble. Ionic substances are more commonly known as salts. Now, some salts can be soluble, which means that they can dissolve. Some are very soluble, which means again that they can dissolve in water. 
and some are insoluble, which means that they cannot dissolve. If they do dissolve, they create a solution. The word solution ends in ion, which means the particles which are found in a solution are known as ions. You have to use page 8 of the SQA National 5 Chemistry Data Booklet to identify whether a salt is soluble, very soluble or insoluble. <laughs> This past paper questions from the National 5 2018 written 7b part 1. State why ionic compounds such as strontium chloride conduct electricity when molten. Remember, conductivity is the flow of charged particles. The charged particles which are found in ionic compounds are ions. They can conduct when molten because the ions are free to move. This past paper questions from the National 5 2019 Multiple Choice 8. Several conductivity experiments were carried out using the apparatus below. Identify the experiment in which the light bulb would light. So, if we look at substance X, we can see that we've got a solid salt, copper sulphate. We know that solid salts or solid ionic substances cannot conduct. That's because the ions are not free to move, which means A and C cannot be the correct answer. We can see that in B and D for substance X, they both end in solution. Remember, solution ends in the word ion, which means that they have ions which are free to move throughout the solution. So potential answers could be B or D. This is where we have to look at substance Y. For B, we have molten sodium chloride. That means that the ions are free to move. And if we look at liquid hexane, hexane is made up of carbon and hydrogen, which means it's covalent molecular. And covalent molecular substances never conduct, and that's because the electrons are fixed in a bond. So the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer B. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2014, written to A. The properties of a substance depend on its type of bonding and structure. There are four types of bonding and structure. Discrete covalent molecular, covalent network, ionic lattice and metallic lattice. Complete the table to match up each type of bonding and structure with its properties. The easiest one to start with is covalent molecular. That's the only one which has low melting points and boiling points. So the correct placement for that is that they do not conduct electricity and have low melting points. The next one, which is easiest to do, is in the order in which it's given in the question, is a covalent network. We know that covalent substances never conduct electricity. This is because the electrons are fixed in a bond. So point number one is the covalent network because they do not conduct electricity and they have high melting points because the strong covalent bonds need to be broken. When we're looking at metallic substances, we know that they always conduct electricity. All metals conduct electricity. So if we look at the third point, conduct electricity when solid and have a wide range of melting points. This is our metallic bond, which leaves us to place the ionic lattice structure with the high melting points and conduct electricity when liquid and not solid. 